Hello there my friends, you're listening to eBird Online and I'm back with another review. Today I'm going to be talking about Happily Ever After, Kalani and Asuelu. And this week Kalani tells her sister Kalini that she and Asuelu have yet more problems in their relationship. I'd like to put it to you Kalani that you have a little bit of relationship in your problems. And considering that Kalani and Asuelu fall out every three to five working days, these problems are all quite unsurprising. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you've yet to do so and a massive thank you to everyone that's subscribed so far. I genuinely appreciate it and also don't forget to hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of my content. And so without further ado, I give you Kalani and Asuelu. So last week as we know Kalini came back home and as we saw Asuelu made a big hoo-ha out of a moving back. He said he just wanted to make her feel welcome. Unfortunately Asuelu's hoo-ha consisted of three balloons and a bit of bunting. But I suppose to Asuelu this represents a big effort. He usually gives Kalini a big F off, so I guess it's a step in the right direction. And Asuelu apologised to Kalini and he said he wanted to move forward and he wanted to have a better relationship with her. Later to producers, Kalini said she thought that this sounded fake and very rehearsed. That's it Kalini, be positive. And later upstairs in the bedroom, Kalani asked her to give Asuelu the benefit of the doubt. Um, then Kalani, please stop slagging him off. But it doesn't take long for Kalini to start poking her nose into Kalani and Asuelu's business. And just in case you were wondering, no, it wasn't wanted. So the next day they're all sitting down having breakfast and they're talking about the fact that they're moving into a new home and they're going to buy a house. Straight away Kalini said, what's the point of buying somewhere? If you're about to split up, why not just rent somewhere? And Asuelu more or less intimated that he saw renting as dead money. But Kalini wasn't having any of it and she said, no, I think renting for you two is the best option. And the truth be told, I think it's going to be extremely difficult for Asuelu to hold his tongue with Kalini. She pretty much pokes her nose into every single decision that he and his wife are trying to make. So the next time we see Kalani, she's with sister Kalini, surprise, surprise, and they're looking for furniture for the home that she plans to buy with her husband. Kalani, why isn't Asuelu there? And this is quite typical of Kalani. She always manages to exclude Asuelu and then wonders why he feels left out and disenfranchised. And so they were walking around this furniture store and it seemed like quite a nice place. And Kalini said, how many rooms are you going to have? And she said, well, I need three stroke four. That's because Asuelu needs a game room. Stroke sleep room. Oh God, it's all pouring out now. And she lays on the bed and admits with her sister that they don't sleep in the same room. And she said, the way that I control him is to let him play games on his computer in his own room all the time. And basically, he only comes to my room when he wants sex. And Kalini looks both surprised and sad. And Kalani continues... It almost feels like when he comes in, we're having conjugal visits. Well, Kalani, if I might interject, the house is pretty much like a prison. Asuelu's got life without the possibility of parole. And then Kalini said it's not romantic at all. And she said, no, there's no romance at all. It's all just pretty functional. I don't know, Kalani. Role-playing prisoner and guard, I would have thought that was super sexy. But I guess not. But I have to say it is pretty worrying because the one thing that I thought that this couple had right was their sex life and their chemistry together. So if we're now hearing that that too is missing, I'm wondering what they've got. And Kalani continues to shit talk Asuelu like she always does. And she said, we don't go on dates. We don't have any alone time. But I do admit that because of where he was brought up, he didn't see this growing up and he wasn't taught to be like this. So you admit, Kalani, that you've married someone from a different culture and with different cultural norms. Thank you for that. And she continued, I'm always trying to teach him things and you can't have a relationship with someone that you're trying to mummy. And her sister said, you should find someone who makes you feel loved. That's the bare minimum. That's all you're asking for. And Kalani said, I feel like a broken record. And she tells production, Asuelu thinks there are no consequences to his actions or inactions. He thinks that we'll just stay married no matter what. So guys, at this point, I think they will as well. I don't think Kalani is about to change things anytime soon. She wants the whole image of 2.4 kids. And that's why she's going to buy a house with Asuelu. It's seeming more and more to me as if Kalani wants it all. She wants the family, she wants the husband, but she also wants to shit talk the husband morning, noon and night. So the next time we see this couple, Asuelu's folding clothes in the laundry room and Kalani goes to talk to him and she wants to discuss the fact that they're sleeping in separate rooms and she tells him it's so difficult for me as not sleeping together. I feel like I'm in the role of your mum. Really Kalani? Demanding a thousand pound a week? along with her minders, stroke daughters. Is that the role you're undertaking? Kalani then asks Asuelu, how do you think we are sexually? And to production, Kalani says, 
We used to make love all day, every day, but things have changed recently. And then Kalani asked Aswelu, what do you think about role playing? Oh Kalani, of course Aswelu doesn't know what role playing is. And she explained, it's pretending to be somebody else. Oh, what do you mean, like prisoner and guard? Oh baby girl, you've already got that one covered. But Aswelu didn't quite understand. What, pretend to be somebody else? Look at other people? And Aswelu said, no, I think it's weird. And she said, no, it's like, you pretend to be somebody and I pretend to be somebody. Maybe I could pretend to be an older, more mature lady on holiday. And you pretend to be the young holiday rep. Kalani, that's not role play, that's just the truth. You could also pretend to be somebody who shit talks their husband at any opportunity. And he could pretend to be someone that's under the cost by a whole family. And then she said, Aswelu, I'd like you to bring me stuff, give me little gifts. And Aswelu said, I bring you pizza. <laughs> I don't think she meant just dinner, Aswelu. And Kalani said, my brother brings me pizza. And then we get the Aswelu flipperoo. He starts swearing and saying, I can't believe you. Why do you have to bring your family into it? And Kalani starts crying and Aswelu says, there's no reason for you to cry. And Kalani said to production, it's the perfect example. He takes offence to everything. Right, this is how I see it. Kalani, you accuse him of not doing something. And then when he says, yes, I do do that thing. You then say, but my family does that for me. You always compare him negatively against your family. And you know that he doesn't understand everything that you mean. And so his irritation and his swearing is through sheer frustration because he doesn't understand what it is that you want. You said you want him to bring things home. He's thinking, well, I bring you things home. I bring you pizza. And I think both of you are wrong in this instance. He shouldn't flip and start swearing straight away, but there's no real need for you to start crying. And Kalani said to Aswelu, I can't have a normal conversation with you. And then she said to production, typical, it's all just collapsed again. I was wondering when I'd get the old Aswelu back. Really Kalani, everything that you're building has collapsed because of one argument. I don't think this argument is that serious. I really don't. And next time we see Kalani, her dad's home for a visit. And he said to her, I want to take you out for a coffee. Oh dear, this sounds ominous. And Kalani says, it sounds like something's up. And they get into the car and Kalani says, what's the matter, dad? And her dad asks her, how's everything going with Aswelu? And she said, well, not that well. We're still arguing. And dad says, not everybody sees eye to eye all the time but I've heard that you want to have a divorce. And apparently Kalani's mum has told her dad that they want a divorce. And they had a conversation in which it was decided that Kalani's dad would speak to both Kalani and Aswelu. And so they get to the coffee shop and they sit down and they have a couple of drinks. And her dad said, so I can't believe you're considering divorce. And Kalani said, it's been so one-sided for so long. But then something happened that shocked the e-bird. I had always thought that Lo Kalani's dad was very pro Kalani and very anti Aswelu, but he made it very clear that now that they have two boys, these guys need to try and stay together. And her dad actually said, if there were no boys, I wouldn't even bat an eye about him, but there are. And this made me wonder. I wasn't quite sure what Lo meant. I didn't know if he meant if they were girls, he wouldn't be bothered, or just the fact that they were actually children and now that meant they needed to stay as a family. I certainly hope it was the latter because Lo should realise girls need their dads just as much as boys do. The eBird couldn't function without Daddy eBird. But whichever he meant, Lo is very pro them staying together. And Lo further went on to say, divorce is the very last resort. You've only been married two years. That's absolutely nothing. Your mother and I have been together since we were 18. Divorce is just for people who give up. And Paul Kalani, she can't believe what she's hearing. And she tells us that she thought her dad would be on her side. And she knows her dad's had problems before with Aswelu. And she's just really shocked. So here's my breakdown on things. I think that now Aswelu is working full time and is bringing home the bacon. And now Aswelu's doing a bit more with the boys and a bit more around the home. Lo is less worried about everything. He, I think that he sees there's less of a problem. And he also sees what I see Aswelu is making some effort. Obviously there's a long way to go, but there are problems on both sides. And then Lo said to Kalani, me and your mum went through exactly the same thing. It's really hard being from a different culture. And her dad said to production, I feel like Kalani's giving up far too easily. Oh dear Kalani, you're not going to have all the support you thought you were. And the next time we see this couple, 
Lowe has decided to take Asuelu out for a game of golf. And so Asuelu tells us that they've played seven times. And this actually makes me quite pleased because I realise that they're forging some sort of relationship outside of the home and outside of his relationship with Kalani. And I think that can only be good for Asuelu and Kalani's relationship as a whole. They definitely seem to be bonding. And, it's, and Asuelu tells us he's really scared of what Lowe will say. Don't be scared of what he'll say Asuelu, be scared of what he'll do. So anyway, Lo says, how are you and Kalani getting along? And Asuelu said, we still have big communication issues, but it's going okay. And then Lo drops a bombshell. He says, Kalani's leaning towards divorce. And Asuelu said, I didn't know that. And then he tells production, I had no idea that she was so serious about divorce. And Asuelu tells Lo, I don't want a divorce. And so Lo said, well, then you need to work on the relationship. It's not just from one side, it's both. From both the man and the woman, you both need to compromise. It took me a long time to live this American lifestyle, but I finally managed to work it out and you need to do the same. And as they were finishing up their game of golf, he said, well, you have my number and you can call me anytime you need it. And Asuelu said, I really appreciate that you're here for me and I'm grateful that you have my back. But later on to production, Asuelu was really upset and he said if Kalani decides to divorce me, I'll lose everything, I'll lose my kids and my family and my whole life. And that's where we leave things for this episode. And so what do I make to all of this? Well I've got three main points to make. As per usual, Kalani has got to stop talking about her problems with Asuelu to her sister and her mum. They already want a divorce it seems and so they're always pushing her in one direction. And I can understand why Kalani is so exasperated with Asuelu because it's very easy for all of their chats to go to an argument and for Asuelu to start talking out the side of his mouth. But as far as I'm concerned, there are many, many times that Kalani kind of wants, I think, a reaction from Asuelu. Remember when he met up with his mum in the square that time? And remember that his mum kissed him on the lips for rather a long time? Kalani said, oh Asuelu, you were making out with your mum. She knew that was going to get him angry and guess what? It did. And then also the time that she had an argument with his mum and his sister when they're on the pier. Again, when she went to talk to Asuelu about it, she said, I would beat your sister if I felt like it. Again, something else which you know is going to lead to an argument. And in this episode, I don't think it was as purposeful, but she still said when he said, I bring you pizza, she could have said, well, that's really nice, thank you. But I was thinking of something less functional, i.e. like dinner, and more romantic, like flowers or chocolates or a little small piece of jewellery. Instead, she said, my brother brings me pizza. So she's almost scoffing at him. And I think it's this kind of scoffing attitude that makes Asuelu really angry and mad and then all communication has broken down, he starts swearing. The second point is, from everything that I've seen this season, Asuelu is really making an effort. He's got a full-time job. He works loads of hours, according to him. I can see he's doing more work around the house with the kids and folding washing. He also took Kalani out a couple of weeks ago, I think to a little cafe to get a bite to eat, but it's more than he ever would have thought about previously. And so he's trying to move in the right direction. And so I think Kalani, it's baby step. But the third point I have to make regarding this video is the fact that I believe Lo can see all these changes and Lo can see a movement towards what Kalani wants. Although Asuelu isn't moving as fast as she wants, he is trying to change. He is trying to build bridges with Kalini and he is trying to be better. So guys, let me know what you think in comments down below. Do you think that Asuelu has improved massively since last season? I certainly do. And do you think that Kalani now needs to hold back on the whole idea of slating Asuelu for every little thing that he does and to look at the positive rather than the negative? I think if she does that, this couple does have a chance of making it. Like I say, they still have the raw chemistry there. They just have to continue to work on communication, which Asuelu actually admits and understands that that is what they're lacking. So that's a good step as well. He knows what the problem is and where the problem lies. And I think that Kalani needs to include Asuelu more and needs to make sure that her family don't get involved in every little decision that they make. There's no reason for her sister to be weighing in and saying, I think you should rent and not buy. None of your business, none of your concern. Whether right or wrong, it's already been decided that they will buy, so why are you now butting in when you've not even been asked for your opinion on this issue? 
So guys, let me know what you think in comments down below, and I'm going to start working on a Mike and Natalie video. There's no rest for the wicked. Thank you so much for listening. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and please don't forget to smash that notification bell so you don't miss anything. You've been listening to eBird Online, and I bid you good day.